Ladies and gentlemen, it is that time. Welcome back to another episode of the Robbie Basil Show. Today is April 23rd. It is draft week. We finally made it, and I have some big announcements for you guys. So, I have three announcements today. Uh, the first one, just a reminder, NFL Draft Special is Thursday night. Uh, we only have one guest, which sucks. A lot of people were, un were unable to do it, which you understandable. It's a big event. Uh, we have Christian. Christian Eastlake is coming back. Uh, he was all part of the draft special last year. He was from 9 to 10. This year, he'll be starting the draft with us from 7.30 to 9. So make sure to tune into part one. Because it will be multiple parts so people can like watch multiple parts. I don't know. That's how we're going to That's how we're gonna do it because not, it's scuffed. Everything is going to be scuffed about this. But uh, I do have my outfit picked uh, in case you didn't know. Uh, so that will be fun. Also for Friday, we will be. I will be doing a stream in this room. Uh, I do have my TV right there, so we'll be able to watch the draft together for the second and third round. It's gonna be a very fun time. Uh, we will be doing that stream uh, Friday. That stream I think will be starting at six thirty. Uh, make sure to follow my Instagram to, for the official confirmation. With the draft starting at 7, I'll probably get food. I'll probably start the stream at 6.30. We might start it right at 7. So we will be doing a Q&A on stream, uh, both streams. So if you have a stupid question, like here's a question that I, I pulled up from my – we did a Q&A like forever ago uh, that, w that I actually – I mean we were going to do a Q&A. And one of the questions was were there more doors or wheels in the world? So if you want to ask stupid questions like that, well, it's not a stupid question, but you get the idea of what we're trying to do. Make sure to tune into either of the streams on Thursday or Friday. Saturday, there's nothing. I've had a chance to possibly be on a broadcast. We don't have that on sa Saturday. Sunday, chat. Uh, I'm, chat, I'm not streaming yet. Uh, I will be part of the ESPN broadcast for Iona versus Mountain St. Mary's playoff women's lacrosse on Sunday afternoon. Noon Eastern on ESPN Plus. It's going to be a good time. It's Charlie. It's Grant. It's myself. It's the same three. Uh, guess who's back? Back again type of vibes uh, from the tr us. But we were the three that did the playoff games back in October for men's soccer. Guess what? We're doing it again with women's lacrosse. So if you want to hear me uh, absolutely not sell during interviews this time. Uh, hit the like button, and we, and the the reminders for the game will be on my Instagram. It'll be on this show's Instagram. We'll be doing a post about it later. Uh, yes, Instagram post. By the way, if you all care about my Instagram, handle in the description. Uh, Instagram post. Second week of May. That will happen. I do have some stuff that we're going to put in already. We have to get the stuff from th from su this coming Sunday, and then it's, like, ready to go, pretty much. Uh, just all vibes. Uh, for, it's, uh, just all the vibes we've had from this year on the broadcasting world. Uh, from the clips from games to me just doing stuff in the truck to more interviewing. Maybe a clip or two from here. So if you have a clip that you want me to use, uh, comment it down below. But today... We're going to keep the theme of the NFL draft today, and we are going to officially reveal something that was supposed to happen a month ago, but due to schedule con conflicts and just other things going on, I wasn't able to do the Wednesday di Wednesday afternoon uh, dr mock draft posts due to the timing of everything. So today, I will be officially be going over my mock draft. So... Yeah, that's what we're going to be doing today. It's going to be a fun episode. Uh, let's get right into it. So the first pick is the Chicago Bears. Let me load up my thing. So you will not actually be, hopefully, won't be able to see. How, here's the worry I have. because I've never done it like this before because my iPad is dead. And usually I would be reading things off my iPad. You'll see me here. Hopefully my like camera doesn't turn off. If it does turn off, GG's to the episode. So... Uh, type GG's in the chat if you think my uh, my thing is going to go down. But here we go. The mock draft. We did with some trades. There were a lot of random trades uh, and a couple of random ideas that I had for this. It is hella scuffed. We will talk about it more tomorrow. But let's break down the picks. 
It's five minutes into the episode. I gotta shut up about the previous stuff. Let us begin. The first pick is the Chicago Bears, and of course, you, everyone in and their mother has them taking Caleb Williams, and I agree. He a, a quarterback with a hyper elite composite arm talent. He can really be able to create plays with with his feet, with his with his arm, and he has great processing ability. He can th- make stupid throws off the run, and he also has the arm talent, like as I talked about earlier to go out and create types of plays that a Joe Burrow would make. Do I think Caleb Williams will ever be Joe Burrow? I don't think so. I think this draft class is one of the more overrated ones recently. I, I just don't buy, like, Caleb Williams being a generational talent. I don't buy it because he wasn't able to win a lot of games. He also never won, made it to the playoff. You get the idea. But Caleb Williams, first pick, I think this is everyone's ideal choice, and it makes sense why. This pick is controversial, well, somewhat. Uh, Last year, when we did this mock draft, we did, I think it was, no, I picked Anthony Richardson to go second, and I'm going to try to not do the same, but do the same at the same, at the, at the, really at the same time. And my second pick is to the Washington Commanders is not Drake May, it is Jaden Daniels, 6'3", Awesome arm, elite running ability, won the Heisman. What else do you not want? He is able to make great reads with the ball. I talked about his arm talent. He throws the ball for days. If you just want to chuck it to Terry McLaurin and say, F it, Terry's down there somewhere, scary Terry's down there somewhere, Jaden Daniels is the type of guy that's able to do something like that. You pair him with guys like, like Terry McLaurin. In the future, uh, there's another receiver that I'm forgetting his name. He went to Penn State. I feel terrible now. I didn't think I'd be this bad with names. But if you want to check it down to the tight end, he can do that too. Uh, he does a lot of things right for me. And I think his arm placement as well. And he doesn't get scared to throw the ball. He's not scared of it. But um, the, the concerns for him... He tries to do too much on scrambling, but if you're a Washington, I don't really think you're worried about that because you had a shorter version of Jaden Daniels with not a lot of potential. Here you have a big guy with a lot of potential. I think this is a great fit for Washington. Next pick is New England. I don't have them trading down. I actually don't have a trade in this draft till pick nine, which is odd in itself. Because you have the rumors of a lot of teams possibly trading down. Uh, the third pick, I have Drake May. Now, I don't like Drake May very much. He's my third favorite quarterback in the draft. And that's why he's going third here. Uh, he is His footwork is not, I don't think, is very good. Uh, sometimes his precision with the passes is not very good. And he sometimes attempts to force bad throws with his arm in high-pressure moments. He's not the greatest in the, in the, with high pressure. But... He's your prototypical well-built QB. Awesome mobility. Solid arm talent. He has great velocities. Really zip those passes right to his solid receiver. Boasts rare leverage. This is from his scout report that I'm reading right now. Boasts rare leverage awareness, both as a pocket navigator and a downfield passer. This is not mine. I have my scouting reports, which is I I have a lot of similar ones to the one I'm using right now. I'm just looking at briefly. But I just thought that one was really interesting. Here's my my big flaw with this pick would be, are it, are teams going to be worried about taking him in with the possible theory that he could be very similar to Mitchell Trubisky? I think he is very similar to Mitchell Trubisky, but they're different at the same time. And I don't know. I've just never been a fan of Drake May. I mean, North Carolina is not a big QB school. So I just didn't think that would make a lot of sense. But listen, New England needs a quarterback unless they want to go about Bailey Zappi, uh, which is which also works. I mean, I, I guess you could draft Marvin Harrison at three or trade down. I feel like they can do all of that. But I have the Patriots taking Drake May. Four, I have Marvin Harrison Jr. going to the Cardinals. Now, the Cardinals are rumored to be possibly be trading down from this selection. But right now, I have them keeping it because I don't think they're going to get as much return as they could for a guy like a Marvin Harrison. I don't think you can pass on a receiver like Marvin Harrison. What he brings to the table is so drastic. 
awesome athlete, brings this different type of velocity when he runs, awesome manipulator against defensive backs, and he also has runs like a million routes. Like, that's the best thing. Uh, very physical. I think that's awesome, too. And he has elite body control. I think a lot of people will like that. Also good ball security. Not a lot of negatives on him, other than, like, sometimes he doesn't show up in, in certain big games, but I just think that's taking it with a grain of salt. Uh, I think this is the perfect pick for the Cardinals. I think this would be stupid if they traded down, unless they got to, like, six and got, like, Malik Neighbors. But then again, that doesn't really help them as much as a Marvin Harrison would. Giving Kyler Murray an elite receiver, I think, would be a great fit for the Cardinals. This is where the weirdness starts. I do not have the Chargers taking a receiver. I have them going offensive tackle. Which is odd in itself. But you got to remember how Harbaugh teams are built. And it's with offensive line. You pair Rashawn Slater with a guy like a Joe Alt, who I have going fifth. I really do think this... This pick, in short, is either Malik Neighbors or Joe Alt. And I have Joe Alt going here because I think this just makes more sense. Uh, he's a former tight end. Great movement. A 6'8". That's amazing already. Tall, lean frame that carries its mass extremely well and has great overall length. That's from the other uh, scouting report that I'm using. Hyper elite flexibility. I think that's something that could be very useful. Uh, his big weaknesses at, at times... He, like, lacks the strength to get to seal the better leverage defenders, which I think could be a problem, but I think it works. Uh, sometimes his feet are a little bit out of proportion, but that's not the worst thing ever. Proportional length is what the other scout report says, but I don't really agree with that. Uh, and mostly the, the other scout report focuses on the footwork, but I think the Chargers need to solidify the offensive line to protect Justin Herbert. They can go the Malik Neighbors route, but I just don't think it would really work. So I'm going to go with Joe Alt. Also, this is John uh, Harbaugh's team. I think he's going to run the ball a lot. I'm going to go with Joe Alt. Sixth, I have Malik Neighbors. Now, out of LSU, we have Malik Neighbors. I love him. I love him. He is a giant. I feel like this would be perfect. His weakness, inconsistency with 50-50 balls, especially with positioning, and is not the elite size. But to be fair, I don't think you really need to care about that with his vertical a vertical ability, uh, both with speed and he has like decent jumping ability. I think at least decent jumping ability. Stellar body control, yeah, I think that kind of works. Uh, he's also, like I said, very. He's also very explosive. Great lateral movement as well, and he has like awesome hesitation moves as well. He does a lot of things right. As a now, granted, he is a rack receiver. If they wanted to go more. The height, you go with Roma Dunze, who I have going a little bit later. But with what they're trying to do, I think Malik Neighbors, pairing him with Jalen Hyatt, I think would be an awesome pick. I don't think fans would be that mad about it because Malik Neighbors is like the second best receiver. I think he'll take the second best receiver in the draft, honestly. Uh, seventh, I have – this is where the bad names come in. Ulumuya Fashanu from Penn State, the offensive tackle – Tall, strong, sturdy frame. He's very physical. I like what he does. Also, very ex- his great patience. I he when when there's like a good run play like when the running back wants to hesitate, he is patient when trying to find his positioning for run blocking. I think that actually works very well for him. R- this is what the other scout report says because I have both of them right next to each other. Routinely capitalizes on imbalanced defenders. Yeah, that works too. Excellent timing, like I said. And he's also well-balanced with pass and run protection. This is one that I don't really agree with either. Can it still attain more consistency? AK, want them to be more consistent with driving power during run blocks. I don't really agree with that. Uh, this one I do agree with. Doesn't quite have elite range or change of direction as a moving blocker. I agree with this. But with the, what the Titans are trying to do, I don't know if that's going to be the worst thing in the world. Also, you can kind of fix that with an offensive tackle. So, I have that going 7th. This pick is a no-brainer. First defensive player off the board, I have Dallas Turner out of Alabama going to the Falcons. The Falcons need defensive defensive reinforcements. And Dallas Turner, I feel like, is the perfect guy for that. High-end talent with his ability to get around an offensive tackle. He's elite burst in length. Does a lot of things right. 
He improved his play strength last season and his ability to fight through blocks. High motor. You love that. Can be more consistent with pass rushing and execution on a down-to-down basis. You, you, at least point for the Falcons. I think that you will take that. Uh, it's not the worst thing in the world. Excuse me. Still has room to improve lower body strength. I think they they can fix that with the Falcons. But I think it's a good pick. Perfect scheme fit. I think this works. This is where the weirdness starts. You're probably wondering, Robbie, why haven't you heard a trade yet? This is the first one. I have the Saints trading up with the Bears to the ninth selection. And they're going to draft Roma Dunze uh, to pair with Olave. Now, you can argue, Robbie, why did they need to make this pick? I This just feels too right for Derek Carr. Pairing Olave, who's a little bit shorter, with a taller, consistent, elite receiver with a who's an awesome athlete, physical, perfect compliment to Chris Olave. Roma Dunze, swift athlete, very fast, also very physical. He's 212 pounds, great run-after-catch weapon, hyper-flexible route runner. He, once again, physical, and he's a master with the hands. Lighter than his listed weight and lacks high-end play at strength after the catch. I don't think it's the worst thing ever. Long speed, maybe a notch below the elite. That's what Olave is for. Still minute details ahead of and at steam at, at stems to refine as a route runner, the AKA fixing route running. That's what the other one says. Uh, I kind of agree with that, but don't at the same time. I think with those fine tunings that the wide receiver coaches can bring in the NFL, I think that will work fine at Roma Dunze. This feels like the perfect fit. Bears are going to trade down and get another good haul. I think this is a good fit for them. Tenth, we have Talise Fuwaga going to my New York Jets. This has to be the pick. If this is a receiver or like Brock Bowers, I'm going to lose it. But Fuwaga, I love him. 6'5 out of Oregon State. Physical. Mountain. This is what the other one says. Mountainous tackle with high-end mass and density. Now, to be fair, I think they said something similar about Makai Becton, but this is definitely better than Makai Becton. Channel its length and frame density into menacing knockback force and torque. The one thing I love that they wrote about this, incredibly balanced. Beckton wasn't like that at all. Length, while acceptable, is close to average. That's not the greatest thing ever. Uh, the issue uh, for me, the comparison, is that Beckton got penalized a lot. Fuwaga, I don't really think, did. Sometimes he can be over-aggressive. I think you can learn that, especially with the Jets starting him right away. I think he'll be able to adapt more. And learn more in the NFL. He also have like some good pieces to learn around. And I feel like Talise Fuwaga will be a New York Jet. Speaking of the Jets, they traded Zach Wilson. So I've, I've already had to do a punishment where we have to bring out Zach Wilson to on on Thursday. So you will see Zach Wilson, uh, the jersey for the last time or one of the last times uh, on Thursday. So GGs to me for my credibility for Zach Wilson. F's in the chat, whatever. This is where it gets even more confusing. 11th, we have the Minnesota Vikings, and I have them selecting J.J. McCarthy. There's a lot of things to like. This I'm going to go off with, uh, I think the this mock draft simulator, what they wrote for him is much more accurate. Whip-like velocity and fits, and fits passes well in tight angles. Solid athlete, I agree with this. Great mechanics, also agree with this. High-level anticipation and risk pro- propensity on middle of field throws. And it kind of works. Uh, once you talk about velocity, weakness, play at a lighter weight, true. Field vision, incon- inconsistent field vision and decision-making, yes. Tugs release, also true. Benefited, this is my favorite one, benefited from his surroundings and wasn't always asked to elevate his team. This was why I think this guy should be the sixth-ranked quarterback and not fourth. Penix wasn't asked to do this. Nix wasn't asked to do this. This is going to set back the Vikings, but this feels like a Vikings type of pick. High-risk, high-reward, kind of like the Justin Jefferson pick from a couple of years ago because there was a little bit of risk around Jefferson of how far he was falling. To be fair, the Eagles did pass on Justin Jefferson, and then uh, they got A.J. Brown. So, listen— in all seriousness, I think the Vikings picking of J.J. McCarthy makes sense. It just doesn't help them at all. I don't know long-term if this is the right pick for them, but we will see. 11th, we have another trade. 
Uh, this is where we have a lot of trades. Now, this, I believe, is supposed to be the Broncos pick. Uh, they're going to trade with uh, Indianapolis, who I feel like just want a tight end. Uh, yes, so this was the Broncos trade. Uh, the Broncos moved down to 15 in my mock draft, and they get and the Colts select Brock Bowers. Now, I think this is one of the more overrated pieces in this draft, not named J.J. McCarthy. There's a lot to like. Size and speed, awesome. Energized athlete, awesome. Can block well. Ultra-reliable hand-eye coordination. Physical, I love of it. I love all of it. This is where it gets really bad. Lack of plant-and-drive technique while in his route tree. Doesn't have the high-end mass or play strength to be a consistent inline blocker, a.k.a. this is a receiver pick. And with a guy like Anthony Richardson, I think pairing him with Brock Bowers would be an awesome thing to look out for. Especially with, I, I think they'll be trying to use their quarterback, a uh, their tight end, excuse me, uh, a lot. And I feel like with the way they can play, I feel like this is uh, a, a solid uh, selection uh, this is the next trade. I have a Las Vegas trading down because they couldn't get their quarterback. And, well, they still bottle and didn't get a quarterback in this, but we don't talk about that yet. Um, the Jaguars take Terry and Arnold from Alabama, the defensive back. What, I, what, do, what do I like about him? High-voltage athlete, a.k.a. he's very fast with the feet speed. Foot speed, excuse me. He can change his direction extremely well. Very explosive, very patient as well, while explosive, which is a great combination. And he's also young at 20, 21 years old, and he rapidly developed over the course of a season. I think that could be a very high-end thing for him. Uh, long Over the course of a deep route, I don't think that would be the worst thing ever. His speed does go down a little bit. Occasionally overcommits in a certain scheme, which doesn't really help. Has improved his IQ and zone coverage, but can experience la uh, lapses in, pat in some certain situations and can better control his high-energy motion. I think you can fix that. Uh, I think this is an awesome fit for Jacksonville. Trading up, being aggressive, trying to get back your dominance in the AFC South, a division that's improved quite dram dramatically or drastic, has improved drastically over the course of the last couple of months. We saw what Tennessee did to try and improve their team. We know what Indianapolis can do. I mean, they already added Brock Bowers in my mock draft, of course. You then saw what the Texans did and how they, they might have their QB of the future in Stroud. Jacksonville needs a response. I think picking up Terry on Arnold is the perfect pick. We go back to the Bears, who, if you forgot about a moment ago, they traded down with New Orleans. Uh, they're going to pick up. Liatu Latu from UCLA, explosive edge rusher, kind of what they need as a whole to pair with Montez Sweat. I think this is a good uh, pickup for them. Does a lot of things right. Play strength and leverage to shed run blockers. I love that. Uh, his arm length is like his real length isn't elite, but I don't really know if that's a really big, big problem. Um, the one f the one issue, and I think I could really draft have him possibly drop is age he's 24 so if you really think about it this might be ending up like a jermaine johnson type of situation where you're you see a guy really fall and i really think possibly towards the end of the first round like this could be, pick could be a guy like a chop robinson which is best name of the first round jared verse i think could be this pick as well for chicago but Picking up the better guy in talent in Latu, I think would be more beneficial for the Bears, especially where they're trying to be right now because they're right around the third position, uh, third place position in the NFC North right now. I have them behind Green Bay and I have them behind Detroit. So Chicago trying to pick up an elite player, a player who can be elite, uh, would be a great pickup for them. This is where the weirdness begins. Uh, 15th after the Broncos traded down uh, and picked up Zach Wilson yesterday. Uh, they're going to draft Michael Penix from Washington, the quarterback out of Washington. Now, why do I think Penix is going to go this high? It's quarterback. This just feels like a Broncos type of pick. Now, granted, in all seriousness, this could be Bo, Bo Nix because of the John Elway typical type of quarterback, which is usually tall and, for what we saw recently, predominantly white quarterbacks. This one I don't think happens. Now, 
The difference... And my mouse is gone. What the hell? Uh, the difference here is what he could bring to the table. And the way that players like a Michael Penix... There we go. It's now all loading again. Actually, no. This just randomized. I don't know what's going on. My thing is going crazy. Uh, gee. Quick F's in the chat for my draft real quick. But we go back to my boy, Michael Penix. And what he can bring. Awesome arm. Great velocity on the passes. Gunslinger. You love all of that. Sometimes doesn't have the high end creation capacity. This is what this, uh, the other mock, uh, the uh, scouting report says. Uh, my big thing is mechanics for him. But I feel like with a guy like Sean Payne, maybe it works. I don't know. We will find out. But that is my next pick. Uh, is going to be um, Michael Penix. 16th. This is where it gets weird for Seattle. I have them taking Bo Nix. Now, I don't know if a lot of people are a fan of this pick. But the 6'2 quarterback coming out of Oregon, I think is the better player. He's better than Geno Smith. I think he'll be bringing more to the table than Geno Smith. And let's just talk about him. High and arm elasticity. Elasticity? This is what the other one says. Uh, my big thing is high level creation capacity. I think he's able to really create plays well. Uh, great eyes, good arm, t arm talent for what he has. But it, sometimes he drifts too much with the feet. Arm strength sometimes is not the greatest. Uh, and needs to sometimes be better in progressions after the first read. Having him briefly sit behind Geno Smith and start a midseason next year, I think, think could be a slam dunk for Seattle. With how they need that elite, pass, uh, elite passer at the quarterback position to try and get them over the top to try and go out and de dethrone San Francisco and company, I think it's a good pick. We're halfway done. We're going back to the trade with Vegas. They're going to pick up Troy Fautanu uh, at offensive tackle. Now, Mr. Fanitanu out of Washington. Well, He's well built. He's elastic. He's an energetic athlete. He's effortless. He's effortless. At, not effort. <laughs> effortlessly matches with, with certain uh, types of players. Patient offensive tackle who can destroy edge rushers. I love it. High IQ. Great range. Uh, sometimes his hands are not in the best positions. That can not help. He's also pretty old at 24, but at this point, if you're Las Vegas, you need a pa uh, pass protector after all the quarterbacks have gone. So I think this is a must meet, uh, big time pickup, uh, possibly of the future for uh, Vegas. The next pick I have going to the Cincinnati Bengals, and they're going to pick up a possible replacement for T. Higgins. I have them taking Brian Thomas. Now, with the rumors of Higgins possibly wanting a trade, the rumors of him maybe being traded in the future, all in all, come together to pair Jamar Chase with another LSU wide receiver. It just makes sense. He's a, Brian Thomas. Let's talk about him. A receiver with elite length, efficient, and he's also very athletic, energetic, awesome route running. He's an elite route runner for his age. Beautiful. Relatively underdeveloped route tree past verticals, crosses, and drags. You can get past that, I think, because only all you need him to do is just run drag routes over the middle while Jay Jett, uh, not Jay Jett, Jamar Chase just run deep, deep balls. It's not the greatest thing ever, uh, but it works. Strive for more consistency. I think that's fine. Uh, we talked about the route, the route tree. Um, needs to be a little bit more consistent in the blocking. They don't block with receivers other than Higgins anyway, and I think you can teach him to be a better blocker. So I don't think it's the biggest problem ever, but I feel like this is just a, such a Cincinnati pick. They're going to panic. I think they're going to pick up uh, my boy, uh, Brian Thomas. This is where it gets fun. The next pick, uh, pick I have is the first corner off the board. I'm going to go with the Rams taking Quinion Mitchell from Toledo to pair with Jalen Ramsey. Now, a guy who can click and close and undercut passes, awesome. Proven ball hawk, awesome. Really good in the short areas, great. 
great frame for a corner. Awesome. Good in press coverage. Great. Versatile. Awesome. The weaknesses, they're not great. Uh, relatively experienced, inexperienced in press man. In press man, while he is good in the reps that he's had, can be baited into making premature hip transitions by wide receivers at times. That That's not the greatest thing ever. Doesn't have elite fluidity. I think that's a big thing that could draw him off the boards for some teams. But he's still good enough to be on this list. Um, next up, we have the Steelers. I have them taking Armarius Mims. So, um, Armarius Mims. Let's go talk about him today. Armarius. The fourth tackle I have taken in the first round. 6'7", 340 from Georgia. Massive offensive tackle. But you already love to hear the sound of that. You love to hear the sound of that if you are the Steelers. A Steelers team that... I think needs like that one more offensive tackle to really make this work. I think taking on a guy like Armarius Mims, who's big, he's strong, dominates in pass protection, I think is awesome. Is awesome for him. I did have an ankle injury last year, which could be a problem for the Steelers, but I feel like this is just a match made in heaven for them. They're going to double down offensive tackles, and they're going to go take Armarius Mims. The Dolphins, in response, will take JT Latham uh, out of Alabama. Uh, the fifth offensive tackle taken in the first round. Massive. 6'5", 342. Uses his length and mass to have elite power and a great level. Dominating anchor once he latches onto a rusher, a.k.a. no one gets past him. Great pass blocker with good footwork. Aggressive. He does a lot of things right. Um, occasionally overextends. That's not great. Lumbering mover while opening strides is not good also. It's not great either. Can't always fully rotate. I think you can fix that with uh, some technique. But I feel like with the what the Dolphins need, I think this is a good pickup for them. For them. Uh, the next pick is the Eagles at 22. We are at the 22nd pick. And don't worry, at the end, we will be making, uh, we will be showing all of the picks once again. Uh, they're going to go defense. And yeah, I have them going defense in the defensive tackle position. And they are going to, or actually, edge rusher, excuse me. And they're going to take my boy from Florida State, Jared Verst. I do have him dropping a little bit uh, in this first round. A bowl of lightning off the snap. You love to hear that already if you're a fan of the Eagles. This is the replacement for Hassan Reddick. High octane, hyperactive athlete works. Instant bursts, length, and motor combine to an officially extremely to an extremely imposing power profile. True. High end talent. Love it. So awesome in the run defense. Visibly lacks elite hip flexibility. I think you can fix that. Uh, he's also old, so this is like the Jermaine Johnson type of pick as well. The edge rushers aren't that young uh, in this draft, but I think it works for what they're trying to do. So I have. Jared Verse going at 22nd. Uh, this is where the like the defensive tackles are going to start falling for me. I have Johnny Newton from Illinois going next. Though This could be Byron Murphy, the second from Texas. Johnny Newton out of Illinois. An excellent natural leverage. That works. Explosive. That's amazing for me already. Uh, he's very flexible. He can do a lot of things right. Active hands. You love that. You love to hear that. Packs impressive strength and frame, love it, and can stack and shed and run defense. He's an elite defensive uh, man, the run defense. Elite mass, I don't really agree with that. He's 304 pounds. Average length, that kind of works. He's 6'1", so he's not great. Um, occasionally jumps the snap. I think you can learn from that, but I don't know. As a rookie, you'd really want that. So that could hurt the pick a little bit, but I still think Minnesota... They signed a defensive tackle in the offseason. They're going to get another one. They're going to get Johnny Newton. Uh, the next pick is the Cardinals, who I have trading up to select Byron Murphy to be a new uh, one of the part of the new faces of the defense. Six foot 297 from Texas, Byron Murphy the second. A perfect blend of natural leverage, proportional length, the mass. He's very good explosive. Good in movement as a whole. Can strength and leverage allows him to prevent... This is what the other one says. Strength and leverage allows him to 
to prevent displacement and withstand double teams. I love that. Uh, weaknesses doesn't quite have the like the hip fluidity. It's something with the hips midway through a rep. It's like a lot. This I'm using the weaknesses from this for the for tech. I like Byron Murphy because I really didn't have any. Um, uncontrollable energy. I think it was the big one for me when I wrote mine. Could be quicker, more consistent, and adapting to counters. I think that is could hurt him. That's why I have him going down this, dropping this far. I think he's a top 15 type player. But my next one, my next two picks are some of my favorites. The next pick is the is the Green Bay Packers. And I have them selecting Cool Aid McKinstry from Alabama to pair with Jair Alexander. Long corner in terms of arms. He's not that tall, but he still works. He's great feel for spacing, great eye discipline, uh, good playmaker as on the defense. Uh, sometimes his speed doesn't really get to where it needs to be. Uh, sometimes he can get a little bit over physical, and at times his he can like get a little bit too much in terms of getting penalized. But with the with the Packers kind of need there, I think this pick could. Uh, so here's my issue. Who this pick should be and who it's going to be is completely different. I think this should should it be a guy like an Adani Mitchell to give them an actual semi elite receiver. Keon Coleman has the type of build that you'd want here. Xavier Worthy could even be better because he's fast as hell. But I don't think anyone wants a John Ross type player. Though I do think the Lions would be the perfect fit for a guy like a John Ross uh, type of player. But that's not what we're going for. Instead, I have them, of course, taking Kool Aid McKinstry. My next one. Is one of my favorite players in the entire draft. It's Chop Robinson. Ladies and gentlemen, I have him going to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to wreck havoc in the NFC South. What a perfect pick this is. This is a perfect type of pick. He does a lot of things right. And of course, this is what you want to hear. For those who don't know, he earned his nickname Chop with unhinged, maniacal energy as a three-down defender. You love that already. Uh, explosive threat, great first step, maximizes his power, can function in multiple different areas. Sometimes he's a little bit inconsistent. Sometimes his hand placement can be bad. His length not, is not the greatest. But it's a guy named Chop. It's the Buccaneers. I feel like what they're what they're trying to do. They need another edge rusher. Best one available is Chop Robinson. Does a lot of things right. I think he'll be the perfect pick here uh, to go to your boys in Tampa, uh, which actually steals the pick from Dallas. Uh, Dallas is next. Uh, they traded down in this mock. Remember that. They are now at the 27th selection. And they're going to go off to tackle as well, uh, which I don't think a lot of people would agree with, but I think – they need to go offensive. Uh, they're going to go offensive te- uh, offensive line in general, and they're going to take Jackson Powers Johnson from Oregon, a twenty year old with twenty one year old with a strong, dense, strong and dense frame, can move well, can do well with the load man with the, the load of what some players can bring. He's great with movement, great pass protector, which is what you need for trying to protect Dak Prescott. Average length, sometimes doesn't have the proper leverage when he's doing some blocking, and he needs to be a little bit more adaptable with the run game. But I don't know if if Dallas is going to run the ball a lot. We're going to have to find out really with the second round. Speaking of running backs, I don't have any going the first round. But in all seriousness, taking a guy like... A Jackson Powers Johnson with what he was able to bring in Oregon, I feel like we'd be a good fit for Dallas's system. Uh, the next pick, twenty eighth overall, I have the Buffalo Bills selecting a Donnie Mitchell. Now this is a the Buffalo Bills can be the one of the teams that really get aggressive for a wide receiver. A Donnie Mitchell could be their guy, long and lean receiver with with great athleticism, great in stride. Mix a 4-3-4 speed at 6-2. That's ridiculous. They just traded Stefan Diggs. And they've lost like, all of their receivers. Enter Adani Mitchell. Perfect. Pair him with Curtis Samuel. Works fine. Flashes great play strength, IQ, and tenacity as a run blocker. That's ridiculous. Um, doesn't always play to his elite quantified 4-3-4 pace. I think they're going to fix that well. 
Uh, occasionally misjudges pace and trajectory. They kind of kind of have to figure that out. It is Josh Allen. Uh, can improve at weaponizing his agility. I don't agree with that necessarily, but we'll see how that goes. Overarching and consistent, overarching consistency with route running execution can improve. Works, but it's a receiver on the board. It's the Bills. They needed a receiver. They can need anything, everything, honestly. I mean, hell, if Kool Aid McKinstry or like Nate Wiggins is here, uh, I feel like it could be them too, but I just don't see it happening. They need a receiver. Enter a Donnie Mitchell. 29th, I have the aforementioned Nate Wiggins. Uh, going to to the Detroit Lions, they're gonna get one of the better defensive players on the board as a whole. Six foot one corner from Clemson, coming off an injury by the way, so that's why I don't really like this pick very much. Tall and lean, you will love that. Lead long speed, very adaptive with his movement, eye awareness and and discipline is great. Tracks high point passes with proficiency, great. Below average land is taller frames, not great. Um, bit uncontrolled with his footwork sometimes with his high, high energy. Sometimes struggles to get off blocks in, and finish solo tackles is not great, but they've talked about that with a lot of corners and it doesn't really hurt them that much. So I don't I don't think this pick can be necessarily wrong well, because I don't think there is a wrong pick with here with Nate Wiggins. Ravens are going to go risky here. The Ravens, I have them taking Keon Coleman, wide receiver, from Florida State, 6'3 wide receiver, lab-built short-range athlete. Pairing that already with Zay Flowers sounds awesome. And Rashad Bateman, amazing. Effortless accelerator, even better. Makes high-difficulty adjustments look effortless. I love this. Shows exciting flashes of leverage. Blind spot IQ as a route runner is amazing. Great in agility. Sometimes he can be slow with that 4 6 one, 40, but he's does with his non-elite long speed and vertical range. It's why he's dropped this far. But I still think he's amazing. I think he's really good at wide receiver. Can really help out the Baltimore Ravens. I have him going at pick number 30. Pick number 31, I have an, another offensive tackle going off the board. This offensive tackle class is actually really solid. And I had Tyler Goyatin of Oklahoma going to San Francisco, pairing him up. On one side, it's going to be Trent Williams. On the other side, it's going to be Tyler Goyton. Uh, 6'7", 322, well-built, tall, high-mass blocker with great length and reach. Great with his feet. Length is, of course, solid. Great in the pass. Flashes the ability to shock rushers. That's what the other one said. I agree with this wholeheartedly. Um, this is the weaknesses. This is mainly with tall offensive tackles. Tall frame naturally causes pads to drift high and, and at times in both phases. Doesn't have elite grip strength, I think could be an issue. Has just one season of starting experience and only on the right side, which is where I think they would start him anyway. So I don't think that's that much of a problem. If you're putting him at left tackle, you're screwed. But I think it still works. And finally, the last pick is Xavier Worthy. I have him going to the Kansas City Chiefs. They need elite receiver. Enter this man. Instant accelerator. Amazing, incredible speed. He ran that 4240. 4.2140. Uh, which is amazing. High energy, great stop and go ability, great route runner as well. Uh, according to this frame, he's very light. He's only 165 pounds, but we've seen with like guys like Devonte Smith that doesn't really hurt them that much. Can be prone to occasional drops on routine throws and with the space to work. So AKA he takes his eyes off the ball and he's trying to make a catch. Doesn't have the strength or physicality. I think they're going to really going to talk about that a lot. Um, and sometimes is routine routine defensive cushions and motion use, usage limits his experience against the press, aka if you're pressing this dude, you're screwed. Um, possibly, I I don't know, I just don't know. But that is who I have being selected. So uh, my thing closed out, so we're gonna have to repick all of these dudes. Um, so let's go over momentarily what my picks were, uh, and as I am trying to fix what I just did wrong. Uh, make sure to like the video right now. Uh, I'll give you time. I'll give you like a 30 seconds or so to like the video because we like, I love it when you guys like the videos and comment something ridiculous or whatever because it's fun. Like I love it when you guys, you guys uh, do stuff like that um, because it's just vibes. Like that's what we do. We have the, vi it's just vibes really uh, at all times. But right now, 
the big thing for me is, once again, re reminder, uh, draft stream for this channel is Friday uh, at, will be, I believe, beginning around 6.30, 6.45 Eastern time. Uh, so if you guys want to tune into that, make sure uh, to join the stream. Uh, we'll be doing a lot of funny things on stream. I will... There could be a punishment for me if we get a certain number of likes on the video or comments. Um, it's going to involve water and a... Well, I mean, we pour, be pouring water on me, more or less. Just as a joke, because well, why not? Well, why not, really? Um, unfortunately, my thing closed, so I have to redo all the trades, which is annoying. Because just the way this uh, website is, but so let's just go through some of our selections. So the first 12 picks was Caleb Williams going to the, of course, going number one overall. Number two, I have K uh, Jaden Daniels. Third, I have Drake May, followed by Marvin Harrison, Joe Alt, and Malik Neighbors going respectively to the Patriots, Cardinals, Chargers, and Giants. F Fashuanu, uh, is going to the Titans in my mock draft. Dallas Turner, of course, going to the Falcons. We have the trade for Roma Dunze uh, with the Saints moving up to select Roma Dunze. Uh, a 10th, we have Fuaga going uh, to the New York Jets. That just seems too perfect of a fit here uh, for the JETS Jets, who we will be mocking uh, to mo on stream uh, because they ripped my heart and... Uh, bands sent Zach Wilson to the gulag, uh, more or less. Uh, he is sent to quarterback hell, a.k.a. Also, um, one fact that, check, uh, Terion Arnold was the first quarterback, not cornerback taken, not Quinion Mitchell. I kind of screwed that up, but listen, what can you do? Um, so then after um, the screw-up with the Jets, J.J. McCarthy went to the Vikings. Brock Bowers in a trade-up by the Colts. He go heads to Indianapolis. Jacksonville trades up with Vegas to select Terry and Arnold. Laiatu Latu, after the Bears traded down, he heads to Chicago. Uh, the Broncos, after trading down, get Michael Penix. Bo Nix is going to go, I have going to the Seattle Seahawks today. Uh, 17th, I, after the trade down by Las Vegas, they're going to get Troy Fautanu from Washington. 18th was Brian Thomas. He is going to go uh, to the Bengals. 19th is Quinion Mitchell. He is going to go to the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, the next pick was the Steelers. They selected Armarius Mims. JT Latham went, goes soon after. Uh, he heads to the Dolphins. Uh, the next pick was Jared Verse. And this, okay, yeah, this crashed again. Uh, Jared Verse, he went to uh, the Eagles. Uh, the Minnesota Vikings followed that pick by taking Johnny Newton. I'm just trying to read like what my screenshot said. Johnny Newton goes. Then we have a trade-up by the Cardinals. That's right. You see, this is the issue. Like when you don't – this should be a learning lesson. Like when you, when you have to like save all this stuff. Also, stupid question. Has anyone ever tried to do a mock sim and you just, like, give a team, like, the greatest trade ever and they don't take it? There we go. Cardinals trade up, get Byron Murphy, which shows how hard it could possibly be to take that pick. Uh, Kool-Aid McKinstry and Chop Robinson. I'll go next. Dallas selected Tyler Guyton. I believe... No, that's not right. That is not right because I screwed up. Uh, the next pick was Jackson Powers Johnson. That's right. Um, to go to Dallas. Uh, the next pick was a Donnie Mitchell. Then it was on the defensive side with the Lions taking Nate Wiggins. Uh, the Ravens took uh, Keon Coleman uh, from Florida State. This is where Gugliotin goes. He goes to San Francisco. And the final pick of the first round was Xavier Worthy. So, ladies and gentlemen, as we head, get ready for the first round, we'll just show you what, officially, what we came up with uh, today. 
Ignore the ads. I don't know why there are ads everywhere. Uh, that is the full mock draft. It will go on Instagram tonight. So make sure to check out the Instagram. Make sure to check out everything. Here is your full thing uh, of the NF- my NFL mock draft version one of one. Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you like it, make sure you hit the like button down below and subscribe to the channel. But for myself, Robbie Basil, I am saying good night tomorrow into the stands. Thursday, NFL Draft Special.